toast. Toast. Ladies and gentlemen of the crypto space, we're live at 11.30 a.m. on a Wednesday, March 3rd. Welcome. Let's do this. We were going to change the denominator. You know, something I've been talking about, you know, Raul's been talking about it. And, you know, I understand from my education, probably the better part of almost two decades ago, but I always appreciated physics from a conceptual standpoint. I was never really into the mathematics, although, you know, with my engineering education, I was exposed to countless physics classes. I, um, I was competent in it. I was able to traverse it. But I always found the concepts much more fascinating the philosophy of physics, maybe you could say, but the stories that could be told. And it kind of, you know, a lot of my life, I think back to how I got to here. And I find myself telling stories. And this is kind of what I always did. I always saw connections between things, relationships between things, and I like the stories that I could tell about them. So I was always fascinated by physics. And that is uh, basically the title, or at least the topic of the Twitter post that I used to announce the stream today. You know, Einstein talked about relativity. You know, the mathematics are digestible. At this point, it's a relatively straightforward, simple theory. But conceptually, it's profound and provocative, uh, the notion that everything's relative. You only understand something when you look at it contextually relative to something else. You're doing well. Relative to someone else. You made a good choice relative to someone who made a bad choice. You had a decent breakfast relative to days you had a shitty breakfast. It's a sunny day today, which is a good thing because yesterday was a rainy day. It's a sunny day every day. You don't appreciate it as much because relatively speaking, it's not an outperforming day, so to speak, if you see where I'm going with that train of thought. Everything that we understand is really relative. So we look at this technical data that I share ever so often on the stream, and we compare it to the dollar. And as Raul pointed out, you know, I've talked about also the um, Bitcoin price uh, in uh, NASDAQ terms. That's probably what's most important. Uh, if we reduce everything and look at things from the most basic of physical properties of reality, relativity. Why are we looking at it compared to the dollar? The dollar is an intermediary. What we need to do is denominate things that we're looking at relative to other base denominators, not an intermediary. How about them apples? Change the denominator. Let's see what happens. Let's shake things up the way we look at everything. Today's episode is sponsored by Change Angel, the non-custodial swap exchange for social goods. Stop depositing on exchanges. Not your keys, not your crypto, non-custodial DeFi, or nothing at all. Bam! Let's pop it over to the main screen and see who's in the stream. We got winner in training. Hola, Professor Noah. Ah, estoy contento de estar aquí. <laughs> Uh, bueno. Um, got Vortex. Uh, Curve has been purchased. No, they have not. That was a name. Um, uh, they got that one. Social media got that one wrong. Uh, Wave Mappers. Dipped my toes into Curve yesterday with USDC. Bad. Boy, the gas fees really bother me, probably because I'm so used to XRP. Sure. So, you know, we'll see the emergence of the other networks, and that's why BSC picked up some steam. Um, and I did a great analogy yesterday in a Twitter post. Um, you know, you're always going to have, you know, Fifth Avenue, Times Square, The Village, and Canal Street for the New York City metaphor. And right now, you the predominant DeFi space, no doubt, it's Fifth Avenue. It's the high rollers. It's uh, Gucci, Louis Vuitton. You know, you're paying two, three, four hundred dollar transaction fees. But there's going to be more, and obviously. Um, you know, if you talk transportation for the analogy, you know, you got the Ferraris, you got, 
you got the uh, Mercedes and you got Toyotas and then and then you have like, you know, 1980s used vehicles. And then you got public transportation. <laughs> so clearly Ethereum is Ferraris and BSC is basically like city buses because it's controlled by a centralized authority and um <laughs> and that's the city controlling the bus system it's not like you have your own car uh, and that that's a great analogy so there's going to be plenty of intermediaries you're going to have obviously cosmos polkadot elron cardano is going to get up to speed with their smart contracts solana phantom and they'll be there and they'll all be interoperable Andre has anything to say about it. So gas fees will be resolved. The appropriate thing to do at this point for everybody is to understand the technology, understand the fundamentals, understand the monetary properties that make these uh, yields sustainable. I mean, if you're talking about raw transaction fee yield of 20%, of course it's sustainable. It's sustained by transaction fees. Getting paid by participants speculating on price action, going in and out of assets. So that's the bottom line. You know, double digit yield is unquestionably sustainable. Now, the interesting thing, the more profound thing, is the monetary policy that these protocols have implemented with the incentivized yield. And that's also sustainable, ladies and gentlemen, double and triple digit additional yield. That changes everything. It really does. It's it's a it, there are currencies, and that's why I call the the Dow assets financial primitives. No, they're going to experience volatility. This is all bootstrapping phase. These protocols literally just launched, reached critical mass to some degree in May of 2020. This is all brand new. This is bootstrapping. So these is. <laughs> It's incredible what they created, and the fundamentals of the projects are profound, tantalizing, discussable, debatable, and uh, I guarantee you, after enough time, digestible, which is exactly what we do on this stream. All right, let me keep it going. Trevor's in the house. Mr. Weeby's in the house. Wave, a pleasure. Igor, yes, sir. Iren, Captain Weber, back in action. KJ, chill KJ, cool. Hello, my brother. Good to see you. Uh, Chris, what's up? Hit the like button. 34 people in the stream, 16 likes. We can do better. Barry's in the house. Uh, Igor, Noah, will you, with your amazing story skills, you should write also a storybook for children with basics and what you teach here. It would be a bestseller. Yes, uh, I would love to. I have a calendar that is swamped. I have jobs. And obviously, I have uh, my family and two children, so I am. Uh, I would love to. I would love to do many things, and I guarantee everyone, including myself, that my lifestyle uh, and what I do on a daily basis needs to evolve. It will change over time, and it's uh, it's just like uh, the education process that uh, yourselves and myself always are going through. We find the next step. We attain new clarity. We make decisive action on how to reorient our path. I like your idea. That's my complicated way of saying it. Everyone always says, you know, know your audience and talk simpler to me regarding the way I speak. I can't. I talk the way I talk. So I give complicated answers. <laughs> Uh, Kevin's in the house, first time catching the live stream while we're here five days a week, uh, spitting the truth, so to speak. Zach's in the house, been going through your old videos. Are you still skeptical on sushi? No. Uh, sushi, you know, I don't, I like its monetary policy. Uh, two thirds go into escrow for six months. It's, we're going to be a ridiculous deflationary pressure. You know, I do get skeptical with escrow, particularly because when the escrow time is, uh, elapsed uh you know and if there's substantial appreciation they're going to have significant liquidation so and this is probably the most pronounced phenomena with regard to like projects like hex uh there's going to be massive 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 liquidations when those locks uh, uh complete or time out or you know uh, 
eclipse. I don't know what when they when they run out of time. <laughs> so that's a big problem, and I'm not I'm not necessarily a fan of that of that choice of monetary policy. I think uh, a an asset these are currencies in many regards will be more stable uh, when it's a a completely liquid asset and you're able to liquidate immediately. Um, and that allows the market to more optimally represent the state of supply versus demand rather than delaying um, the inevitable liquidation process. So that means when you delay the inevitable liquidation process, you're basically disrupting supply and demand or rather offsetting it for extended periods of time. And that's going to introduce volatility uh, when those uh, escrow time periods uh, eclipse. Um, and I'm not a fan of that. Um, okay, you guys are going so fast. <laughs> We're going to have to do better with um, how I manage commentary. Um, Lewis, I consider risk-reward on state, state another way, reversing the denominator <laughs> risk versus risk. That's, I agree in many regards. Um, you know, these projects have a uh, vested interest in what is being done. So we have been de-risked with the majors, um, you know, that whole rug pull scene we saw last year, DeFi summer, was hot. But when you peer through the madness, what you see that has emerged is tech giants, majors of industry. The same thing as uh, Steve Jobs uh, in his garage and Bezos in his little office. And it's not just vested interest. Th these projects are in a position to significantly become uh, financial institutions, um, and they're growing in that direction, and they have their own monetary policy and their own currencies. Wow. So we have been de-risked for the major AMM platforms with regard to that type of risk, where they would drain accounts. Yeah, that's not going to happen. These These companies have been all partnered with corporations and venture capital and they themselves built it because they're technologists <laughs> so that's deep risk now if there's security risk with regard to the smart contracts i think that to almost an entire extent has been de risk for the major amms particularly because contracts and software iterates it builds on itself um so Exploits that happened last year in 2020 have all been learned from, and exploits even this year have all been learned from, and the amount of um, security breaches has been significantly reduced, and obviously, it makes sense as the security breaches have been reduced when there is a security breach, it's of a significantly higher value. But nowadays, there's um, treasuries, there's insurance, and there's other components of actual functional financial systems that are emergent. Nexus Mutual. You're worried? You're taking an excessive risk? You go to Nexus Mutual and you get an insurance policy. Right? <laughs> um, Gavortex, what uh, what to do with REN DGB? Nothing. There's nothing to do with it at the moment. We need, uh, we need markets. So we need uh, incentivized yield and stuff that facilitates uh, monetary velocity. It's not there yet. It's chicken and the egg. Uh, wave mappers agreed the lending process and what I care more about than the transaction fee. Yes. So, you know, do dollar transaction. Just understand the technology at least. Play around with 50 bucks and figure this shit out because uh, at some point there's going to be a platform that is suitable to your uh, gas um, limitations and your comfort level. And that's the, that's it. And so you need to understand how these systems work, the monetary policy, and experimentation is an absolute necessity at this point. Um, Jay says, uh, converted my 100K link portfolio, which I grew from 5K into a real portfolio that making me $700 a week with far less risk than single coin positions before. You're very welcome. And that that's the whole, you may, so that sounds familiar to myself. I took excessive risk last year. This has been an enormous learning process. Now, I guarantee Link is a great project, but from growing from 5K to 100K, you took excessive risk because at 100K during a liquidity event or a macro financial crisis could have easily turned into 50K. 
So the fact that you were able to capitalize on a 5K to 100K appreciation and then diversify into protective instruments that have downside, um, offer downside protection and offer upside exposure, muted downside, muted upside, but generate a revenue stream. Sure, I know in 2017, 2018, the big deal was... Uh, denominating everything in Bitcoin, you know, how much Bitcoin have you made? And it's not dollars. So, but you could do something similar in that regard. And the Bitcoin is really a savings account. So you're making your weekly 700 a week. That is extraordinary. Take a salary, 700 a week. Sure. If you don't want to save any money, you, you take the $700 a week in cash and there's a salary. Clearly, we have to pay taxes. That's mutually exclusive. But you could divert a portion of your salary into a savings account. And sure, you could recycle that back into DeFi. And on USDC and uh, you know Ethereum USDC, you go over to Alpha Hamora, you get like rid ridiculous yields. Or if you go over to Curve, you get in. You know the yields you get in boys and girls. You could, you, you could outpace inflation in this market. I don't care if inflation is 15%, 20% real inflation. Now, if you're getting 60% yield, curve is incredible. And even Ave is incredible. It just, it's just an extraordinary space that has been emerging, evolving, and iterating over the last year. We have powerful, powerful tools available to us. Let's keep it going. Heirloom, my man, D Dr. T, always a pleasure. Uh, minding your business, please don't please don't change. We we all need to adjust and learn to understand at all levels. That's right. I, I won't change in the, the in the regard that you are referring to. But we all have to evolve. Change is inevitable. It must be accepted. I've said that I swear since I was probably like fourteen years old or sixteen years old. <laughs> uh, Captain Weber, can I stake a rook without uh, without pair? Yes. So that is the point of single sided LP positions. You can stake rook without pairing it with BNT. That is how Bancor single sided LP positions work. Uh, Carlos, I'm betting on Avalanche. They already have two Uniswap clones and yield farming. Cool. So, you know, f that's great. And Avalanche is cool. I What I'm looking for is interoperability. You know, I would love to play around in BSC. Not that I think it's going to do very well because it's centralized, meaning it, uh, it's completely susceptible to sovereign regulation. Shut it down. And I'm not going to put significant value on a platform like that. Um, but if there's interoperability where I could click a D app, a Web3 D app, you know, all the stuff you use, they're all D apps when you're interacting with blockchains. And if I could click some stuff and transfer some value easily, seamlessly, why not? But I can't. You can't get shit on the BSC. <laughs> it's the most annoying thing. You know, I've tried. And there, there is uh, a couple of protocols that you could use, but it's all baby stuff. They're all infants. They're all, you know, just, just getting started. I'm not going to transfer even $1,000 using these baby systems. I have no need to. I'm not interested in the risk. There's too much risk. You think I wouldn't, well, that's the thing, you know, I'd be interested in one inch, but the yield is like 50% on one inch BSC, albeit the transaction fee yield is through the roof. But you can't get value over to BSC. It's it's just the Binance Bridge literally restricts all Americans. You are not allowed to legally use it if you are an American. So that is <laughs> that's crazy to think that a blockchain project that cuts off three hundred and sixty something million people is actually go heading in the right direction. Um. Maybe complicated, though, maybe complicated thought phrases and new jargon uh, beyond my little mind, but causes me to research and grow. Yes, and that's the whole point, and that's what I like to say. My wife always tells me to know your audience, but I like, I like YouTube because the videos people can play over and over again, and I like Q&A because I can answer questions. And the whole point is when you don't understand something, your goal is to understand it, and to ask questions until you understand it and to Google search until you understand it. And over time, every single thing is understandable. 
and my videos can be repeated, replayed, and you can ask questions about them, and that's how we grow, and that's how we figure things out. Let's do it. Um, the Agree, the madness hid legit tech in plain sight. Yes, that's the point. That's incredible. Uh, so you had to peer through the madness, and I, I saw monetary policy, and I saw sustainability for these incentivized yields. And frankly, just the transaction fee yield was incredible. And I saw over time the risk profile reducing. That's right. Well said, Mr. Mr. Weeby. Uh, Chris says, when you say that double and triple digit deals are sustainable, why or how are you seeing that long-term sustainability? They're sustained by monetary policy of uh, balanced inflationary and deflationary pressures. Uh, the inflationary pressures are decaying inflationary curves. And they're coupled with strong deflationary pressures, including supply disruption and burn components. So as long as there's a balance of inflation and deflation, um, you're not going to experience significant debasement. Sustainable. And this is probably best exemplified with the Bancor Vortex. Uh, that's extraordinary, sust extraordinarily sustainable, double-digit yields and double-digit incentives. Um, but the other protocols as well. I mean, one-inch curve. Uh, sushi, they all encourage significant supply disruption. Um, uh, just, I could go through each one of them individually, and I have. They all have unique monetary properties, monetary protocol, monetary policy properties. Um, they all do it a little differently, but they all have significant deflationary pressures. Absolutely fascinating. Um, Ryan says, you've been talking about double-sided liquidity pools lately. Can you please quickly go over what projects and stable coins are good for that? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the majors, the majors, you know, stick to really like, curve is incredible. Those are not really double-sided. They're all single-sided. It's all dollars, but it's all stable coins. So that they're unique in that regard. So double-sided pools are predominantly like Uniswap, uh, one inch. You got some double-sided pools on Bancor. Um, and those offer a balance uh, that uh, mirrors supply and demand uh, following the bonding curve, as they talk about. Um, and when you pair a volatile asset with a stable coin, you have significantly muted volatility, which means dollar stability. So it, I said this on Twitter in a post, that when you have a volatile asset paired with a stable coin, you have dollar stability. When you have a volatile asset paired with a volatile asset, you have um, dollar stability, but slightly increased volatility of your principal. Um, Bancor is the only protocol that offers asset quantity stability with full risk on exposure, full exposure to upside and downside. It's the only protocol that you could do anything like that with, with its um, single-sided LP positions. So there's increased risk with those LP positions, but you're also going to get increased yield which is extraordinary. So it's kind of, they all fit together to construct a portfolio, assessing risk, applying value to different protocol positions based on your risk tolerance, your desire and need for salary, and how you balance that. You have to be comfortable. You have to be able to sleep at night. Um, so this is all a personal thing. You have to find what you're personally comfortable with that allows you to sleep at night. How about them apples? Oh, well, the stable coins are simple, Ryan. It's it's this USDT, USDC, US uh, um, Dai, and uh, I like GUSD because that's the easiest way to get uh, capital out of the system. Basically, from when you're taking profits, you convert to GUSD. You have your account on Gemini. You send them GUSD. You literally just dollars to a bank account. It's the easiest sequence of events I've ever seen. Now, now, bear in mind, pay your taxes. And token tax is crazy. I, I gave them 2500 bucks. They're going to go through all my tax records, uh, all my contract interactions, something like 30,000, 40,000 transactions over the last year. And their service is bar none. Paid a hefty price. And it is worth it because if you're going to go through 30,000 transactions, you better know what you're doing. And of the organizations trying to get into this business, I like them. Pretty cool. Um, let's keep it going. I know I have some things I wanted to talk about, but I'd rather answer questions. 
and I kind of talked about the um, the the title of the stream uh, in brevity. But there's there's more to talk about that concept, especially looking at technical data. But I like answering you guys' questions; it's more important. Uh, JD ha having risk off positions allow me to sleep through more REM cycles. That's right. Not waking up every three hours, wait, waiting for next opportunity now and doing more learning. Sure. Uh, and there's always a great risk on play. I think uh, I think Rook's an incredible risk on play. Now it's been extremely volatile. Went up to 800 bucks. Went down to 300, upper 300s, 400s. That's a massive volatility. So risk on is different, like full risk on. It's not the strategy that I talk about nowadays. You all, and frankly, I've always said you only want to take small positions of your portfolio and full risk on. Because of full risk on in crypto, you're looking for like a 5x or a 10x. So if you take 1% of your portfolio, don't destroy your portfolio with 50%, 100 You're going to kill yourselves. Not, you know, it's a bad, bad statement, but you're going to kill your portfolio. You're going to destroy it. That's how you destroy portfolios by gambling. But if you have a hundred grand and you take a thousand dollars into a risk on position and you make five grand or ten grand, you just substantially changed your portfolio. Your portfolio is up ten percent. That's incredible. So stop taking excessive risk. You want to take minimum risk. You want to convert your portfolio into an employee. You want to draw a salary. You want to be able to sleep at night. You want to be able to not need to work. You want your money to work for you. And you want to be able to choose how you spend your time during the day. I want to work. I love to work. But I want to do what I want when I want. And by having your money work for you, that affords you that luxury. And that, my friends, is what I would argue to be financial freedom. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Crypto chicks in the house. Always a pleasure. White Wolf, BSC is centralized. The uh, whole point of crypto is decentralization, even if one inch took a knee to Binance. Well, and not really take a knee. I wouldn't say it like that. It's good for them to expand, but there's it's all about risk. That's the whole point. And there's significant risk with centralization because that means the government could come in and shut it down. You can't shut down Ethereum. You can't shut down Uniswap. You can't shut down the centralized protocols, no matter what. It's technologically impossible. You would need to turn off the internet. So I'm serious, technologically impossible to turn off Uniswap. Uniswap V1 is still online and functional. These are immutable smart contracts deployed uh, in a decentralized fashion around the world with countless redundant backups everywhere. You can't, it's not, it can't be turned off. This shit is Skynet. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> um, hit the thumbs up. We can do better. 52 people in the stream, 31 likes. We can do better. <laughs> Dr. T, what happens to these risk-off liquidity pools, FUSDC, when there's a black swan major crash? Uh, so, okay, so that's the whole thing. When you pair with a stable coin, you have reduced downside and reduced upside. But, when there's a liquidity event, you're going to have yields that go through the roof. Transaction fee yields go up. So a liquidity event, things go down, things go up. Your principal is going to fluctuate. It's going to go down. It's going to go up. What's interesting is a liquidity event is an incredible event for liquidity providers. You became the bank. You're going to get a higher salary that week. Don't focus on the principal. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but if you take 10K, uh, you know, it's not going to produce a lot on a weekly basis. But if you take 100K and you're making 50% of your money, you're making 50 grand a year, which is more or less 1,000 a week, you got to pay taxes and whatnot. But during, you, forget about the 100K. Write it off. That's the principle. It's going to go down. It's going to go up. You're making 50 grand a year. Do you really care about the 100K? You turned it into an employee. It's going to go down. It's going to go up. The fallacy that people need to get over is to accumulate a large amount of money. You turn $10,000 into a million dollars. What the fuck are you going to do with a million dollars? And that's why, no matter the size of your portfolio, you need to focus on money management. You need to redefine your goals. You need to redefine how to manage the money 
to do really what you wanted to do. So you really need to define what you really want to do. And what everyone really wants to do is not make a million dollars. Everyone wants to have an income. The goal is a salary, not exorbitant money and riches. You see where I'm heading with this, folks? The prevailing sentiment and ideology uh, pervasive on social media is a fallacy. It's wrong. Not that it's bad. It's just short-sighted. It's not, uh, <laughs> it's not in person's best interest. And what happens is they gamble. And they take risk on positions. People are buying Dogecoin. Dogecoin to a dollar. They're not going to know what to do with the money. <laughs> They're going to have no idea what to do with it. Learn money management. Learn how to generate money using money. If you have five grand or a thousand dollars, that's why I say to test and experiment with these protocols. Because once you figure out how to make a salary, you grow the salary, not your principal. You clearly have to grow your principal. But the focus is the salary, the recurring revenue stream. The principal will go up and down. It'll go up and down. Who cares? What you care about is if you're making two grand a week and it is a crash and you're making 2,500, three grand that week. And then everything comes back down to normal and you're making two grand a week. And then everything inflates and you're making four grand a week. You see where I'm heading with this? Focus on the salary, not the principal. All right, let's keep it going. I got, I got some time. Let's keep it going today. That's got a lot of stuff on your mind. I like it. I like it. Um, Celsius is now loaning in California. That's unfortunate because Celsius is mission critical. They offer 1% loans on 25% uh, LTV, loan to value ratio. Uh, that's so cool for paying taxes. I'm just saying uh, it's a great place for Bitcoin. Borrow dollars, pay your taxes, and pay off the debt using your salary from your crypto lending and LP providing. <laughs> Extraordinary. Um, BlockFi is cool, but uh, their loans are horrible. Six, seven percent. Uh, so I, I don't, uh, I like them both and I, and I provide liquidity to them both, but I'm, only, I'm not going to borrow at six, seven percent when I could borrow at one percent. Just saying. Uh, Lewis says, keep it down. Can you explain how the platform with a million total supply is deflationary and translates to tokenomics, assets, appreciation over and above the, uh, it's not deflationary. It's inflation. It's in, it's inflating. It's an inflationary protocol. They don't have deflationary component yet. So they're not quite there yet. I, I'm actually, I got a phone call. I might have to cut the stream short. Uh, Bit is in the house. Always a pleasure. Let me see if I can get through a couple of questions. Do you know about the team behind Keeper Tao? Yes, yeah, the Ren team, Ren VM, those boys. Uh, White Wolf, how do you decide on a portfolio percent breakdown of how your single side versus double side LP positions? Risk. It's all about risk. How much risk do you want to take? Uh, dollar stablecoin pairing is a reduced risk profile. Dollar stability. Uh, double volatile asset pairing is uh, increased risk profile. More um, principal volatility. You're going to have dollar protection as well. But it's going to be more volatile. You'll have less dollar protection with a double volatile pool as compared to a double uh, a double LP that is paired with a stable coin. Um, my man Lewis, thank you. 49 people in the stream, 35 likes. We can do better. Hi, Noah. Can you show us how to provide liquidity on one inch? I'm not going to give examples or tutorials. You can find that from DeFi Dad on Twitter as well as Bankless HQ. Just clicking a couple buttons. You got to have your MetaMask, and you're going to want like a Ledger device. So go to ledger.com and get your hardware wallet. Ryan, my man, I don't preach. I, I, I educate, educate. Yeah. Macro mind. What percent of stables and crypto pools are you in? Listen, if you haven't, if when you realize the way this system works, you're going to realize how powerful stable coins are. Just saying. You're going to have a lot of stable coins and you're going to, they're going to be making a lot of money. Uh, what's your opinion on growing tax free in crypto? Sure, you could use like a Roth IRA, but you know, whoopie do. I'm not waiting till I'm 67 to make a salary. 
<laughs> so I'm going to take my salary and I'm going to pay taxes on it. And I'm going to pay token tax $2,500 a year so my taxes get done right. Uh, hi, Noah. I'm going down to Bancor Rabbit Hole. Have you covered it on a previous video? Thinking about getting some Rook and putting it in there. So Rook is cool. Risk on. Full risk. Volatile asset. Decaying inflationary. You know, that's better than inflationary. It's not no doge. But it's, it's a decaying inflationary curve. Bitcoin is a decaying inflationary curve. Just saying. So there's nothing wrong with it. It's, they have a great monetary policy and the platform is extraordinary. And it's positioning to disrupt uh, basically uh, MEV uh, value capture. And that changes everything for Ethereum. Um, but it's risk on. It went from 800 to 400. Big deal. Risk. And I am extremely risk adverse. Protect your damn gains. That's why I love stablecoin paired pooling. That protects the downside protects the principal, and produces the revenue stream. Uh, Ryan, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Dr. T, but when a huge crash is over and the price of my F side of the pool is much, much lower, what will happen to the pool? Your salary is going to stay stable. It's going to go down, but your salary is going to dip. It'll be offset by the increase in yields during the volatility event. It will stabilize when the principal goes back up. And it will grow over time. Your salary will grow over time as the principal grows. Ah, so that's the whole point. Focus on the salary, not the principal. Uh, feeling like Hercules, strong air. Well, we're, we're trying. You have to grow, and you have to uh, take next steps. And I never tell people what to do. It's, this this isn't a show about what to do. This is a show about what to understand and what to think about in order to make better choices. And take advantage of novel opportunities and do things differently than everyone else. And what happens when we do things different than everyone else? That's how we win. Because the vast majority of people aren't winning. So let's do it differently, boys and girls. One step at a time. Experiment with little amounts of money. Take less risk. Less risk. Less, less risk, boys and girls. That's the name of the game. Uh, awesome chat today. See you tomorrow. You have a good one, Erloom. Catch you. I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. Lewis, inflationary Rook. Thank you for correcting me. You know, it's all good. Uh, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I love Rook. Rook's great. But I, 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 I am much more interested in, um, from a portfolio, you know, the vast majority of the portfolio perspective is less risk. I don't want full risk. On, I, I can't think of a full risk. on. Well, I do have full risk. On, I'm sorry. Because I have, uh, I have inflationary assets. I have Cosmos. I have... Uh, uh, iris and th th but um so i have my risk on but i um vast majority of the portfolio is not risk on risk adverse generate the salary and the small percentages of your portfolio um that's how you uh outperform a market if you take one percent of your portfolio and it goes 10x changes everything I'm telling you right there changes everything but small very, very small. Protect your gains. Risk off. Um, any auto compounding tips? Gas can be brutal. Sure, that's urine finance. Uh, YFI, urine. Uh, so they do auto compounding. Um, any uh, crew says, uh, changing my morning alarm to sound by them. Noah saying, we can do better. <laughs> Bitcoin dig thoughts uh, is volatile. It's not my cup of tea. Never really caught my fancy. You know, I have 42 people in the stream, 36 likes. I typically say we can do better, but that's pretty damn good. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Thank you, everyone. 12.09 p.m. Wednesday, March 3rd. We'll do this again tomorrow. So, as always, tell everyone to subscribe, and I'll answer everyone's questions because we can do better. I will see you tomorrow. Peace.